in this episode of The Mind Pump. The Mind Pump. So, of course, we talk about uh, fitness and working out and fat loss and getting healthy, but we also talk about current events and stuff that happened in our lives. Uh, that's in the intro portion of this episode, which lasted 39 minutes. Here's what we talked about. Adam start, started out by talking about his trip to Organifi in San Diego. That's Organifi's headquarters. Now, Organifi is one of our sponsors. They make organic plant-based supplements like protein powders, green juices, gold juices, which are good for relaxation and sleep. They have so a, many juices. They have a, a product called Pure, which is good for gut health and has also got some nootropic qualities. We think you should go check them out um, so much that we got a discount for you. Here's what you do. Go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump for 20% off. Then I brought up a study that showed how people with high IQs um, have a higher tendency to be mentally ill. Um, so now I feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> then we talked about Kanye West and how he's come out publicly about his uh, conversion to or full conversion to Christianity. So we'll see how his marriage goes. I'm with, sure uh, we're going to hear about it. Yeah, with his marriage to the devil. Yeah. Uh, then we talked about how my daughter loves her Felix Grey uh, glasses. Those are blue blocking glasses that she wears when we watch TV at night. Oh, and by the way, Felix Gray is partnering with Breast Cancer Research Foundation in October. So when you get a limited edition pair of the Nash frame glasses in pink lemonade, they'll give 10% of the sales to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Now, Felix Gray, makers of the best blue blocking glasses you'll find, they don't tint or change the color of everything that you're looking at. So they're not orange or red glasses. They look good, yeah. um, and they are one of our sponsors. Here's, here's how you get yourself They're a pair. not for dorks. Go to Felix Gray Glasses. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump. Make sure you get yourself a pair, and you'll get free shipping and free returns. And then we talk about LeBron James and how he loves to comment on everything politically, except for when it comes to China, because we know it's going to affect his uh, bottom line. That's interesting. Then we got into the fitness portion of this episode. The first question, this person wants to know, what's the best advice we can give someone who wants to lose a lot of weight, like 50 or more pounds? So we kind of break down what that looks like. Next question, this person's heard that the older you get, you lose muscle mass. Is this true, and can it be reversed with weight training? Mm. In other words, are we inevitably just going to get weak? Next question, uh, is it better to sit or stand for exercises? For example, you know, you do an overhead shoulder press. Is it better to do it standing? Is it better to do it seated? And if there are differences, are some of them better for certain goals like functional strength and other goals like sculpting the body? This is the functional versus bodybuilder war. There you go. And the final question, this person's a full-time personal trainer and wants to organize the payment side of the business. And they want advice. So we talk about how to charge clients, uh, the best ways to do that. And then we, at the end, we talk about ways to collect the money uh, via websites and stuff like that. Also, this month, MAPS Anabolic is half off. This is by far our most popular muscle building, metabolism boosting program that we have. This is the only time it's going to be 50% off, so you might want to act now. Dude, if you don't have it, how dare you? Now, this program comes complete with your whole workout. So there's four phases if you count pre-phase. So that's 12 weeks of working out, exercise demos. Uh, the workouts are all laid out for you. Um, follow the program as it's laid out, and you'll get phenomenal results. Here's how you get the 50% off. Go to mapsred.com. That's M-A-P-S-R-E-D.com. And use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space for the discount. Dude, I want to hear about your uh, your trip to um, Organifi. Dude, it was awesome. The magical place. So I forgot that they moved. So I'm taking Uber. Wait, is this not where we went when we yeah, went? Yeah, yeah. This is. Oh, that's right. They were in the San process. Diego, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's still San Diego. It's still not far. Like I think the other place is kind of like downtown San Diego. And I knew I was coming in like two hours early. So... I was like, okay, I'll just get something to eat, have coffee, relax till uh, I meet up with Sean and Drew. So I get my Uber. I just give him the address. And, you know, I mean, you, Sal and I for sure like this where you have, I have no fucking clue where I'm ever going, right? <laughs> so I'm not like, I just think I'm going to the same place. It just didn't dawn on me. So my head's like in my phone. I'm working. I'm not, I'm not even looking where we're driving. And so I'm like two hours early, right? And I look up and I'm like, oh, I'll just, you know, when we get downtown, I'll walk over and go get some. Grab food or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I lift my head up 
And Uber guy's like, oh, we're here. And I'm like, oh, fuck. It's like an industrial area. So there ain't nowhere to There's go. There's nowhere to go. And I'm like, I'm like, I gotta <laughs> oh, sit out on their curb man. for like two hours <laughs> like a douchebag. <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, do you know this area very well? Could you take me like to the nearest Starbucks or something? And uh, he's like, uh, yeah, I think there's one this way. And so then they, they they took me over there. I hung out for a while. Then Shauna calls me up, says she's she's on her way. We meet up and we walk we walk over to this place. And it's, I think, I want to say it was 16,000 square feet. Big. Wow. Really big. Wow. Yeah, massive. Because the place before was maybe half. Is it like a Not warehouse or like mm-hmm. office building? Yeah, yeah, very similar like feel to, you know, like when we go to Onnit. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They have like an industrial area that you're, they're, they're surrounded by over there. Yeah, yeah just and, offices or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Uh, concrete floors. You walk in, uh, I think their, their doormats say, prepare to be hugged. So as soon as I walked through the door, <laughs> and it, it was true. You know, like I hugged like three mm-hmm. times right away. Wow. Um, was, That's uh, nice. Got to see uh, Shauna. Always love hanging out and seeing Shauna. She's great. Yeah, yeah absolutely love her. Um, Best Drew, rep ever. Yeah, she's awesome. And so is Drew. I mean, Drew's a really cool guy. Uh, as soon as we walk in, both of them were there. Um, and then they gave me a tour. Now, what was really cool was it's been, I want to say, two years since. Wait, we, what was Drew wearing? Just, that's just so I know. Uh, I said, I did a picture. I posted the picture of him. He's very that. fashionista. Yeah. It, we're, we have a different style. Yeah. yeah the, we, the last time we were there, he wore this, this like, it was like a jacket, but it buttoned all the way over on the left side. Right. It was like one of those, uh, like Sergeant Pepper. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Totally. Kind of jackets. Remember that? Yeah, and then did. he had- um, <laughs> You two like, are like you two are not man. allowed to comment on fashion. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying it's good or bad. Oh, I'm we just, are. I'm we're just very much allowed. We're, I'm, I'm we, object- might not, we might not be right, but- Yeah. I'm objectively comment. just to describe- Actually, I'll tell you this much. I might not know what good fashion is, <laughs> you're, but I know what bad fashion <laughs> is. You're, 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 you're fashionably retarded. Let's <laughs> just be honest. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he had that jacket and then he had uh, like, uh, they were like gold shoes or something last time. Right. Was it something like that? No. He wasn't that uh, flamboyant. It was uh, he was he was dressed, but he did have like a I think like a starred uh, long sleeve, short sleeve looking thing. Um, huh? I, yeah. How is it long and short sleeve? Well, you know, it looks like it's a, a short sleeve, but it, it looks like you have a long sleeve underneath it. But it was actually sewn together as one. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. He does have a perfect oh. beard. He did have a really good yeah. beard. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, we get there. Very groomed. And um, right away, I'm like totally impressed with the place. The place is really cool. You know, it's uh, you know, I'm a little jealous of this. I hope that Mind Pump uh, we grow into something to this size and that same kind of feel. I mean, it's got ping pong tables, it's got meditation rooms, it's got places where you can go take naps and sleep. It's got the video games. It's got a gym inside of it. Do like, they have working places? Naps? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, 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 I'll get to that. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some. Everyone's got their dogs there. You know what I'm saying? Bean like bags and yeah, the, no, all the, of that. Right? It's very uh, you know Google Facebook esque. Yeah, I was you know. Say. So, I mean, th- those guys are machines. I mean, they really are. I-, I-, I have yet to walk into a facility and see. I mean, all joking aside, and this was in the old place. Uh, we yeah. walked in there, and it was like like a well oiled. Machine. It was a war room of sales guys. Hands down. So we we obviously we have a lot of friends um, that sell supplements and uh, some some of them very successful at it. Uh, and so I've got the opportunity to hang out with a lot of these different CEOs that have built really successful multi million dollar companies. None of them, which I'm as impressed as I am with Organifi's operations. I mean, they just. They, I mean, and you guys know because I like I could stare at numbers all day long. He's got, I think, I counted twelve, you know, fifty-inch plasmas around the wall, all the walls as you're walking through there, and it's like all the data and analytics on the back end, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. all the infusion soft stuff, and you can see like every every influencer, every podcaster, every YouTube, everything that's that that they're they're putting money out into advertising. Uh, what it's converting at, what the rate, what the dollar, what the cost per acquisition is. Like, it's just, it's detailed. And then they have like sections throughout the building that are like, you know, oh, these are all like our data analytic people. Here's like all of our, our sales call team people. Here's all of our like design people. And they, and they have like these little, these little little pods groups of like four to 20, depending on, you know, what section. What impressed me the most when we went the first time when we went down there, um, and, and this is just something that I, I learned from managing gyms. Like when you walk into a gym, you can tell if it's, if it's going to be or if it is a successful team 
by um, feeling the uh, the enthusiasm, energy, and the and the brand or whatever you want to call it from every employee. So, like if you walk into a gym, obviously you have your general manager, your salespeople, and your and maybe your top trainers. But then you have like front desk people, porters, kids club. But when you meet those people and you can feel from them that they're super behind what they're doing, you know, like this is a phenomenal team. That's what I felt with Organifi when we went the first time. Oh, I don't well, care who I talked to. They yeah, were everybody's so, waving the flag. They were sure. yeah, they were so behind what they were like so behind what well, they were doing. Well, that's why they, they I mean they, they're on Inc 500 for several categories, one of those being best place to work. Yeah. I mean so. they had like they had like water cooler things where you could drink green juice and you know people were talking about uh, all aspects of health. So it wasn't just a supplement company. They actually, you know, when you were talking to them, they were all everybody there was into health and wellness in real ways. You know what I mean? It wasn't oh, like they just had salespeople good at sales. They were really into health no, and wellness. No, no. In fact, actually, what was neat too, um, there was people there who have recently in the last year got a job there and they found out about Organifi through listening to Mind Pump. No way. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that was cool. What we was got them employees? I tell you what, yeah. <laughs> so I tell you, it was- it we was get a, a you're, you're welcome. It was a pretty cool feeling that, I don't know, I think they had 60 something employees- Roughly that were there, and uh, as I'm touring, the girl who the girl actually who toured me uh, didn't know much about me or Mind Pump or anything. We walked in, so she got introduced, and she's kind of like walking me. She must be new through, <laughs> yeah, through <laughs> the through the place, and uh, but we couldn't get maybe ten feet in the place without somebody turning around and, and recognizing who I was from Mind Pump because they all listened, dude. Like oh, the, that's great. I, of all the companies that we work with and that we've done we've done things with, this is also why I love Organifi is that they are. They're, I think that a lot of their values align with us and they true like the whole office listens. And I mean like listens. Like I every time I was walking through a section, I'd get bombarded by, you know, five mm-hmm. to ten people that would come up and they want to talk to me about yesterday's episode and what Sal said about this and what do you think about that? And like all wanted to engage in conversation about mind pump and what's going on with us. That's like, awesome. Yeah. That was really, there's a couple standout moments for me with the company. One was when I first met, um, cause the way we got introduced to Organifi, I believe is when I first met Shauna and I don't remember what event it was at. Do you get, do you remember the event we were at? It was it like was a dinner. Spartan. Was it the Spartan dinner? Yeah, it's yeah. the first time we met Shauna. That's right. Yeah. And then we met her, and and you know she's great, great vibe or yeah, whatever. She's and then a sweetheart. We, we got introduced to the company, um, and then we saw what they did, and we liked them. And then the second thing that was a standout, and I talked about this recently, was that whole ordeal where I forgot what company uh, was a third party tester that went and tested all these organic uh, vegan protein powders <laughs> and found high levels of heavy metals in them. Some of them had lead. And so immediately when we got that, uh, when we saw that study come out, I was like, oh, hell no. And I got on the phone right away with them and I said, I need to, I need to see tests from your, from your product, from your protein that yours is clean. Otherwise, we won't work with you guys. And they were so responsive. They were on everything right away. They cared, uh, they cared a ton about what we thought about the product. And they also wanted to make sure that people knew that their stuff was legit. I I thought I loved the way that they responded and reacted to that. You yeah. know, it was really telling. So when I, I'm taking the, the, the tour around, we get to the section where they have like a, a gym area and this really cool kitchen area. And then they have this, this giant dance, dance revolution game, which you guys have seen those before. Dude, right? I, yeah. And I saw like on your story, uh, one of the employees there was just like hammering away at it. Like I've never seen before. Bro, he was Fifth in the world. Okay, so his listen to his. Story. Wait, this is the whole thing. They can compete. Yes. Wow. Yeah. There's like it's like a it's legit thing. Like, see, like he trains for this. Well, you could tell he leans back on the bars and his feet move like he's a uh, river dance or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so uh, this dude, okay, lost a hundred pounds playing Dance Dance Revolution. Oh, what? what? That's all he did for exercise was practice dance, dance, What revolution. a great story. I know. That's yeah. why they, I think that's part of 100 like- 100 pounds? He looks like a normal- 100 crazy. pounds. Wow. Through playing dance, dance, revolution. Now, and I, I believe that's how it started. It started as a, you know, do this for exercise. It's a fun way to, to get in, you know, lose some weight, burn some calories, basically. Uh, and he got better and better and then fell in love with the game. And what you guys, with that video I, sh- I showed you, that was like a, he hit, a, he, he was a perfect score. None of those were, he never missed. What? Yeah, that was a perfect score. 
I've never played that game. How does that? Yeah, because I mean, it was it was going so fast and like all over the place, dude. I, so if I you looked at the video, you see it like all the the uh, it just keeps saying perfect, 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 perfect. It just keeps popping up because yeah. he's hitting all these combos. So you just memorize like the whole thing. I he, guess these moves. I, I mean, even if you did that, I think to to accidentally not miss with your foot, I no, think would be crazy. Have you guys ever played? Impressive. You guys ever played that game? Yeah, I've tried it like twice. Yeah, did you really? It's not my thing. No. Never, did they, you try it down there? No, they tried to get me. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not gonna go after that guy. Yeah. Goes. I'm, I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I was pretty good at, at Guitar Hero. Yeah, I'm a white guy. I'm like, I already have a hard time dancing. Like, yeah. you're gonna try and put like, but buttons I have to hit yeah. at the same time. Like, it's, that's why it would be good. You, just you know, what's funny about that too, because I was listening to uh, I forget what business podcast it was back in the day, but they're talking about Chris Saka, like the the major <laughs> investor, and so he's like ranked number two or three in the world at uh, Wii Tennis. Oh wow! It's like why? Just because you, <laughs> just because he wanted to be the best, you know. He's just like, oh, I'm pretty good. Yeah, you're already awesome. He kept going crazy yeah. with it, and is like num- ranked number two or three in the world. Well, doesn't didn't Organifi? Don't they continuously get awards for uh, like employee satisfaction and working? Well, they're, there? they're 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 ranked in Inc. In Inc. Five hundred. That's a big deal. Like be, because employees like working there so much. Best place to work. Yeah. So it's ranked best place to work That's in crazy. Inc. Five hundred. So Inc. Five hundred has multiple like. Uh, um, uh, whatchamacallits to, to, that they give away their awards. Like, well, they have a lot of factors there, right? That environment, but also like San Diego. I mean, you got like uh, pretty much everything you'd ask. Yeah, no, it's cool vibes, dude. They have this outdoor section too. You can lay out in the sun. Did they give you any any hints on any new products or anything cool coming out? Actually, we didn't. They talked, you know, it was it was more about, I actually want to go down again and talk to them more about business stuff. I want to meet with, I I met the CEO for the first time, Um to Jamel DG DJ AMEL, I think it's I I, I got I, I think I fucked his his name up. Uh, I apologize if he's listening, but I had never met him before. And young dude, real young. <laughs> like I actually thought they were fucking with me when they told me that he was the CEO. And um, I, he's in his early thirties. And I know you guys met him. Yeah. How weird is that? So I met Drew and uh, the guy you just said it, in two thousand thirteen. At an infusion soft, uh, like uh, it was this internet marketing seminar thing. This is back when Doug and I first uh, created Maps Anabolic, put it all together, put all the sales pro- stuff together, and we would go to these internet marketing conventions to learn more about how we, because you know I wasn't, I had no social media presence, we had no no authority, so how are we going to get it out there that this is a good program? So we took these, we went to these seminars and stuff, and they brought. Drew and uh, the gentleman you're talking about up as an example of a successful company that utilized some of these techniques. And this was back in 2013. Was it 2013, Doug? Yeah. Yeah. So six years ago. Um, and so that's the first time I met them. How funny is that? And then we saw the video. Yeah. His his name, yeah. I, I heard her say Jamel, but I know he spells it D-G-A-A-A-M-E-L. So D-J-A-M-E-L. Maybe, maybe the D is uh, silent. I imagine that. Or it's just Jamel. Yeah. Uh, like that. Yeah. There he is. Yeah, so uh, so he he had to be in his early or mid twenties when you guys. How met funny him. is that? Because then Doug was able to pull up the video and show you guys. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that I wild? Know. And we saw you guys just standing there getting evaluated. And I guess, I guess he ha- he has a, a you know a aerospace engineering uh, background. Is smart I think. dude. Yeah, really smart guy. Really humble. Really cool. Uh, you would never guess that he's the man behind everything. Wow. Um, in fact, I was as I'm I'm asking all kinds of like analytic questions and like stuff I'm curious about on the back end and everything like that. And Drew's like, I don't know. You got to talk to Jamel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he obviously is uh, responsible for a lot of what's going on behind the scenes, which makes that company super, super strong. I mean, they, of course they have, I mean, the first step is you have to have a good product, right? You have a good product. Well, if you combine good product with good marketing, with good staff and good uh, you know environment good and good culture, culture yeah. You're gonna you're gonna do your your odds of succeeding tremendously Hitting on all ends. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I mean, if one of those things is off, you could still do okay. I mean, I know some supplement companies that, uh, you know, they do well. Um, but you go into their facilities and you 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 walk around and you see the culture and you're like, oh yeah, this is this is a house of cards. But they do okay because the products are good and because they have some good exposure. Organifi's got all that. They've got everything working for them. Yeah, so, you know, so. it was pretty amazing that you guys met them. All I mean, you pulled Doug pulled that, that up and seen yeah. him. That I mean, that was seven it, years ago. It was so destiny. six I, years ago, I, I imagine six years ago. Yeah. So I imagine they're they were you know maybe maybe making a couple million dollars a year, and I believe they're on their way to a hundred million dollar. That's company. crazy. Yeah, that's insane. Just, you know what I learned from watching that video with Doug? 
Man, I aged quickly. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Too much wisdom we're throwing down here. Yeah, yeah that's you know, what it, yeah. you said it good the other day that we're, we're aging in dog years, dude. Well, I'll just tell you what. Hey, low testosterone and fucking and, uh, yeah. and divorce will do that to I you. I tell guy. you what, bro. Oh yeah. man, divorce will make your hair turn grayer than a fucking. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. I think mine's I think, almost white now. Well, I don't know, dude. I think you and Doug are the you you and Doug are the champions. You guys look the 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 same, the most similar. I think you and I look like we've aged the most. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Justin and Doug. Doug or not aging. Yeah, I'm just, especially Doug. Doug looks I the mainly same. just haven't changed fashion. I, that's, I, my, that's my secret. Yeah, the part <laughs> part of me is a little worried because I'm like, you know, Doug's a good guy, but maybe he's uh, maybe he's drinking blood or something, and it's I don't know, yeah, something's yeah, going. Yeah. He's doing some kind of secret rejuvenation, yeah. you know, technique. But he's not telling Tiger us about. blood. Anyway, speaking of smart people, I read an interesting article on IQ and uh, mental illness. Have you, do you guys know that they're connected? Have I told you guys that before? You have there. You're at. A, I believe you're. You have a higher chance of mental illness the higher your IQ is. Yeah. Right? So like uh, tone the line. Which, which I think we've. You when you meet like crazy. It, I mean, like way on the spectrum, intelligent people. They're always off too. Definitely. Y- yes. Right. But mental illness is different than just being weird. Like no, there, I, there's being weird, which is okay. No, That's, off. I said off, not weird. There's, so you diff- there's a difference between off and there's a difference between weird. <laughs> like, we're weird. I'm yeah. weird. You're weird. We're all a little well, weird. Like all their resources are just going to that one place. So they haven't really developed the rest of Yeah, that's what know, I mean by like off. Like, you, you meet it with them and, and they're just, you yeah. You have these weird. Your awareness. Yeah. Well, so I read this. So I'm reading this study. So it says that people with high IQ are more at risk for developing mental illness than the rest of, the rest of the population. It says that people with an IQ of over 130 found that those with high intelligence are at significantly greater risk for the examined psychological disorders and psychological diseases, especially things like anxiety um, and anxiety-related disorders. And they think that, now the study suggests that that is due to the increased levels of awareness that people with really high IQs have. So because they're much more hyper-aware, they react more to stimulus from the environment, they create a hyper-brain, hyper-body scenario where they display a hyperactive central nervous system. So an example would be like tiny stimuli, like a clothing uh, tag, brushing against you or strange sound can trigger a low level chronic stress response, Hmm. which activates a hyper body response. So they think it's just overexcitability, hyper awareness in really smart people. So I guess, you know, now on the flip side, here's the interesting thing. Low IQ, when it gets really low, is also associated with higher mental illness. So when you look at a chart of you know mental illness or whatever, it, in the middle is where it's the lowest. So people are kind of average, you know, normal or whatever. Mm-hmm. As you get to the really productive, so like really a reverse, smart, reverse bell curve. Yes, as you get to the you know low IQ stuff, then you start to see higher rates of of mental illness. It's kind of kind of interesting to me, right? That does so, actually make a lot of sense in terms of like having more uh, you know awareness and like really over analyzing everything. You oh, know, yeah. it would would just stress you the hell out like constantly. Yeah, just, you're imagine. in your head too much. Yeah, too you know much. What I'm saying? It reminds me of the uh, the also where men are on those charts. Have I told you about this? Where when you look at um, across uh, you know population and you look at okay, most people fall somewhere in the middle in terms of intelligence and productivity. And then less people fall over to the left, which would be, you know, dysfunction, people committing crimes, people who are violent. And then on the other end is like hyper productivity, hyper intelligence. Men, uh, a higher percentage of men make up the ends than women do. So women, Mm -hmm. women uh, are the extremes. Yeah, there's more men at the extremes than there are women. Not a ton more, but definitely some more. And I was reading about this and they think that they think the reason why that is, is because Men, uh, evolutionarily speaking, are just more expendable mm. because you know if you have a society and you lose a chunk of the women, um, the odds that that society will be able to succeed and continue are low because women can only have one baby every nine months, whereas you can have where one man can impregnate impregnate many women in a nine month period. So nature basically rolls the dice more with men, yeah. and what you end up with is more crazy people. But sometimes you get like hyper productive uh, type of people as well. <laughs> so it's kinda, a roll of the dice. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So we're just expendable like that. Anyway, <laughs> so the whole like you know the, the, the well that's it. We, we might as well talk about Kanye West. You had something to talk about bringing <laughs> yeah. it up because I know a lot of people His spectrum think, people. <laughs> yeah, they think that like I mean he's pretty much 
on the level. Some people think he's he's a genius in terms of like his his ability to create and musically he, he is. Yeah, you musically. can't deny that. He, right. Well, he publicly he publicly came out as a like a born again Christian. So this is now I can't wait for his new album because it's it's going to cause all kinds of controversy. I just know it really? is. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is it all about that? It, let's look at the title of it. Hit the hit I'm uh, pretty sure it's like search. almost like gospel music. Yeah, no, it's the, t- listen to the title. Uh I can't believe I can't remember it off the top of my head right now. Kanye's new album. Now here's my question for you guys. Do you how do you think this is going to affect his his marriage? Because Hmm. His wife, Kim Kardashian, and that whole family doesn't exactly jive with, uh, uh, you know, with Christianity, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, with those values. I don't know. Maybe, maybe she's bought in, though. Maybe he convinced her. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. That would, that would be interesting to yeah. see. Oh, it's, it's called Yondi. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what it says up there. That's not what I read before. Yeah, it says uh, Jesus is King album. Oh, is that the, the uh, yeah. subtitle to it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I read before. Yeah. So it's a. Uh, it's not very <laughs> subtle. Yeah. No, there's nothing yeah. subtle about it whatsoever. <laughs> so, so you guys I, think that's a Christian album? <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be, it will be interesting. I don't know. Do you think that really matters for her? Bru- yeah. Dude, if you're. It, it, look, it, the, that whole family does shit that is whatever. To I don't their understand own. her at, at all. But so they don't. Whatever. It, it doesn't jive. In fact, he commented about something. Um, it said something that she did something where she wore some outfit or whatever, and he said something like her outfit uh, hurt his soul. So he's already commented on some of the shit that she's worn or done. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's, there you go. It says uh, she wore some outfit at a Met Gala, and he said that her sexiness is hurting his soul <laughs> as he criticized her wardrobe yeah, for displaying too much of her body. Come on, dude. Like, Wasn't he the one behind her whole it, breaking the internet? Uh, pictures where she was like, you know, like dressed with nothing and her, her, you know, famous big booty was out in the open. Yeah. Oh, the champagne one? Yeah. Is that him? He was, was a, oh, I'm that, pretty sure like he like was behind the idea of that. Right? Well, what'll be, what, what will be interesting because, and we probably, you guys probably had no examples of this in your life. We all have a friend or somebody who finds religion at one point in their life, oh, and, yeah. and they just they, go, they just start they're learning how to, how to what's the word? They integrate just it. hammer you with it because well, they're learning how to integrate it. Yeah, they yeah. go from one extreme to the other mm-hmm. extreme, and uh, you know, I he's what he's he's bipolar, right? Is he? Yeah, yeah, I believe oh, he's, okay. yeah, I believe he's I bipolar, right. and so oh, maybe he's feeling manic right now, right? So it could be like one of these deals where he goes way off deep end on that side. So yeah, I don't know. No, nonetheless, it's going to be interesting to watch. Well, you know? <laughs> you know, it's no different than when you first when one of your friends first finds fitness. It really isn't. You're, you're, you know that friend that all know. of a sudden now is like CrossFit or is working out, or all of a sudden becomes like a, a nutrition. Nazi, yep. and they're fucking annoying for like a year. Yep, you know, telling everybody they got to work out or whatever. the 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 best uh, The best way I've learned about this was watching um, the documentary on uh, Mr. Rogers. Remember that documentary? We yep. love the documentary. Nobody knew that Mr. Rogers was such a hardcore Christian, and he said he didn't want to. He wasn't trying to preach anybody. He just wanted to be an example. And mm-hmm. so when people would ask, "Why are you such a nice guy?" then he would mention, "Oh, it's because I'm." A Christian or whatever. It's no different than fitness. It's like trying. I tried so hard to convince family members to work out, and all it did was push them away from fitness. It pushed yeah. them away from health. Best and fitness. way to do it is to be an example. Be an example. And eventually, people will ask you and be humble and yeah. be cool about it and don't judge people and do your thing. And then, yeah, you're right. People eventually will ask you and say, "Hey, you know, I'm, I'm trying to lose some weight, or hey, I, you know, my knee hurts. What do you think I should do?" And, and then, or hey, why do you have so much energy all the time? Like, well, because. I exercise, and then they'll ask you more questions about it. No, it's, it's the only way. No, it's a it's a great uh, analogy because it's <clears throat> we get asked that question a lot. Like, you know, what do I do with my you know my mom or my spouse or my family member that you know they're they're eating terrible, they're doing all these things, and I want to help them. They need this help, and it's like you can't do anything. They mm-hmm. have to ask you, and it's the same thing if you were somebody who's hardcore religious, you found Jesus and, and it's changed your life and you have a spouse who's not, or you have somebody and you feel you need to save them. And then all it does is push them away because you're constantly preaching to them. It's like, you know, your best way to help those people, whether it be trying to, and you know, and the only them into, way. Yeah. Or get them to eat well is to be an example, be mm-hmm. an example, such a good example that they can't help themselves but ask, like, what are you doing? Well, like, think uh, about it. You're if, happy. You're amazing. Totally. You're good to people. Good things are happening in your life all the time. I don't understand this. What is going on? Tell me. 
and that's where you have an opportunity to talk to those people about whatever it well, is. Well, think about it. If if you all of a sudden converted to becoming a fitness enthusiast, all of a sudden you whatever you're like, oh my god, exercise is changing my life. Eating right is changing my life, and then you become an asshole to the people around you. Do you think they're going to want to even no. the, all of a sudden you're just berating them and hammering them and making them feel judged? Now here's the flip. What if you start exercising and eating right? And you become more calm. Mm -hmm. You become a nicer person. You have more enthusiasm and energy. You're just in better moods all the time. You look better, but you don't talk about how you look better. You're just, they can see that. Right. right. And then they want to ask you what's going on and what's happening. And that's the best. It's the, the most effective way. It's the most effective way. It's, I, I went to one, uh, I went to a church service where the, the pastor was actually talking about that. And he's like, you know, he goes, a big mistake people make is that they find something and then they make people not want to even look into it because they don't they don't become better as a result of it in that person in the other person's eyes. Why not just become better and allow people to be themselves and then and then wait and see what happens? It doesn't guarantee, by the way. It's not going to guarantee that just because you started working out and eating right that the, the people around you are going to start doing it. But it's pretty much guaranteed that they won't if you hammer them about it. No, the they're definitely it, watching you, which is something you know. Even if they don't ask you questions, they're 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 paying attention. No, you, you I hundred percent agree with that. And yeah. I, I, to me, if if they're not, it just it's a reminder that I must not be exemplifying that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're not asking, if if I think that you need health and fitness in your life, or Jesus for that matter, and I and I want you to to see what it's done for my life, and you haven't asked a question. To me, that's just a, a reflection that I'm not. Obviously, I'm not exuding yeah. it enough. Obviously, I'm not the best billboard. Right, exactly. So it's just more. I instead of worrying about you, I got a lot of work still to do on me. Mm -hmm. I still got to keep working on my shit because obviously you live with me or you're around me all the time, and you don't find the need to ask me anything. To me, that's the that's the greatest example of. Oh wow, there's still a lot of work I got to do on myself if I can't even get the people that are around me that see me all the time to ask me questions like what is it about you? What are you doing so different? Like tell me more. Well, think of right. the think of the perception that some people or a lot of people in fitness have, that we have on on a lot of people in fitness. So if I say to the average person, the average American who doesn't work out or whatever and I say, "Hey, what it, tell me some characteristics about fitness fanatics and enthusiasts." You know what you're going to hear a lot of? Oh, they they you know they like to flex in front of the mirror, take selfies. Right. They they they'll make you feel bad for eating a certain way, or they'll tell you what you're doing is wrong, and that's not the perception you want to give off. What if it was like this? What if I said, hey, give me, what do you think about like fitness fanatics and enthusiasts? Like, oh, God, they just seem to be really happy. They seem to have a lot of energy. They seem really nice to you know. Yeah, to, their to skin looks good. Yeah. They, they smile all the time. You know how many more people <laughs> yeah. you would convert because people you don't have to say anything. They just look at you and see it, and they just say, "Oh wow, that why is that guy so so happy all the time? Like, why are you so energetic and stuff all the time? What's going on?" Rather than the whole like, you know, hey, every time I eat a fucking donut, you know, my 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 cousin comes over and tells me I should not be eating this donut. Yeah, screw you, dude. I'm gonna eat this donut even more now. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, rebel. It's, it's hilarious. Did it's you so guys funny. happen? You guys listen to the near episode yet? Oh, the uh, I haven't listened to it, I but mean, I got I was comments there. on it. That would yeah. be yeah. Well, <laughs> you were there. That's yeah. right. So was I. That that's a. I'm listening. I don't listen to our episodes that often. Every once in a while, uh, an interview I enjoy so much, I go back and I listen to it again. That's one I did. Yeah, that was so, a very riveting uh, uh, conversation. I feel like you guys would be cool and like with your kids and stuff. Would your kids listen to that, or would you let them listen to that? Would Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna at have, some point, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna listen to it with my with both of my kids, but my son especially. Um, in fact, his school is having them do a tech free Saturday. Oh wow! So the school actually told the kids um, no technology on Saturday. Um, if you do use technology, um, then we want you to reflect on it and why you couldn't stay away from technology. And it's really cool. And so my son's totally, you know, totally into. And uh, speaking of technology, my daughter absolutely loves the kids Felix Grey glasses that she has. Oh, now after you've tricked her, you tricked her into using them. Now yeah. she's hooked on was them. She, was, was it like a battle? Like he had to like kind of sell her on it, or did she initially like? She she likes them because them. they look good. Yeah. So they look kind of cute, you know, because they're for kids or whatever. Yeah. She sees me wearing mine. So it's like something we do. So we'll be sitting around, you know, we'll sit on the couch or whatever, and right. we'll we'll watch something together. And I'll take my glasses out, and then I'll say, "Do you want yours?" And she'll say, "Yeah, oh, absolutely." And she puts them on, and she you looks so ritualized adorable. it with the family because we we put them all like stacked uh, right next to the couch, and mm -hmm. so we just if the TV is ever on now, we all just go grab and put them on. Yeah, we do yeah. totally. Now, have you guys seen the pink ones that they're doing? 
No, mm-hmm. what's the pink ones for? So they, they have like a breast cancer awareness month they're doing, and they're donating money. Doug, could you look that up? Oh, I, I heard about that. Yeah, Rachel said something to me last week about it, and I knew we had Felix Gray coming up sooner or later, and I wanted to, to mention that I know they're doing something for breast cancer awareness month. Oh, oh there great. you go. There's a, there's a, they're partnering with Breast Cancer Research Foundation in October. So they released a limited edition of the Nash frame in the color pink lemonade, yeah. and 10% of sales will be donated to the Breast Cancer uh, Research Foundation for the month of October. Oh, that's nice. very nice. I have the Nash ones. So. That's very nice. You that got the pink fits ones. Fits my though? fat face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah, actually. No, would, I don't. Have pink I would ones. think you would do a different pair because you do have a bigger face. I I wear the Nash because it's kind of a narrow. <laughs> actually, I, I gave the. I, I take it back. I gave those the Courtney. Yeah. And then I had to get the other ones that were bigger. Yeah, I yeah. would think you because I wear the. I have a real narrow face, and the Nash is what fits me really well. Oh, look at those; they're actually kind of stylish. They right? look really good, don't they? Would yeah. they wouldn't look bad on you, Adam? I could see you wearing uh, pink glasses uh, yeah. with the right. With the right. <laughs> well, no, he tends to push. Yeah, with no, it. I know he with he the could right get away with it. With the right outfit, if I had like he, a, if I had like a, a pink it. tie or like a light pink shirt, I would do something like that. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Just... Paul Schaefer, the the one that was uh, David Letterman's yeah, uh, yeah, guy. He was always wearing the flashy glasses. Yeah, yeah. No, with the right outfit i would i don't know if i would just oh, hollywood all the time yeah. hey did you guys see what's happening with uh, lebron james oh bro you know what no what's what's up i i you know there's a part of me that i have empathy for him because when you become that massively famous you can't people just want your opinion on everything yeah just so there, mike and so there yeah there, there, there's a little bit of empathy i have for him but then i have the other side of him where, where i want to just go shut the fuck up mm. stop talking about politics this is i you you don't it's i i fear this from me like i when people tend to ask us a lot of questions that i know that i'm not an expert in and i don't like commenting on it's like i don't know enough i don't know enough to have a a deep uh, intelligent political debate with you over this. I'd much yeah. rather step aside, focus on my craft, which most of all of you fell in love with me for, which is playing basketball and continue to stay doing that. And I'm just going to fucking step out of this conversation. But we put all of this pressure on famous people to tell us what they think because they have this platform. And then what ends up happening, in my opinion, is people end up manipulating these famous people to in their direction. And then all of a sudden they, they nah, have you, you just like him. Huh? You just like LeBron. I do. I like. No, him. he's full of shit. I'll tell you why he's full of shit. No, I like him as a player. I can't stand him as somebody who's. You trying know. To- uh, you know why he's full of shit? I'll tell you why he's full of shit. He's not manipulated. He has a big mouth. It's his own fault because he's the same guy who's putting out tweets about, you know, if if you're silent about you know injustice in the world, you're part of the problem. Oh, you know, open your mouth. He's talking about you know calling President Trump a bum and wearing T-shirts that black life like Black Lives Matter talking about police brutality and this and that. Then China, then I don't remember who it was, an executive for the NBA wore a T-shirt that basically said, you know, stand with the protesters of Hong Kong. China is a massive market for the NBA. LeBron James probably has a billion Chinese fans who buy all of his shit. Right. So what does LeBron do? He comes out and like basically talks shit about the guy for saying something about Hong Kong. He doesn't know a lot about what's going on over there and he shouldn't be tweeting oh, anymore no. or whatever. So all of a sudden, Mr. fucking vocal. I, I saw his press, oh, I saw no. his press conference and I was just shaking my head like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Getting involved. That's why I didn't like that stupid show that he just did. Yep. The one I the fucking HBO one or whatever it is that he's doing right now. The, I, the one I keep fucking the name of. Well, it seems Undisputed like, or it whatever seems it seems like uninterrupted. That's what it, it is. Right. And, Doug? It, and it seems like yeah. he has a, a, a <laughs> Doug's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, cool. It's a shitty, I don't it's a know. shitty show. Yeah. Don't waste well, time. it looks like he's ready to talk and, and, and act tough when it ain't going to affect his bottom line. But because it's China, which is going to affect his bottom line in a big fucking way, now he's going to well, act like Mr. Where, fucking... I don't so this is really where I anything. think he's manipulated, right? You've mm. got to think he's got an agent or he's got a PR rep that's telling him, hey, you need to come out and say something about this because this will affect you significantly if you don't. And instead of like thinking it all the way through of like, what am I getting involved in? And yeah. and caring and being easily manipulated and directed to say or do things, he fucking gets out there and he says stuff. It's like, bro, stop. Stop. You're if you're as good as he is, okay, here's a deal, right? And I know that there uh there's a a, a reporter one time that got uh, totally lambasted for saying uh, shut up and play basketball. It's a famous quote that was said and got all kinds of backlash for somebody saying that a guy saying that about uh you know, an athlete speaking out about political issues. But the truth is, if you're a superstar athlete at his level, you got to believe that 99% of his time is dedicated to playing basketball and being great at his craft and sure. recovering and training. It is not 
studying history and politics and everything else like that. He gets a fucking snapshot of that with, and and given to him from other people probably mm-hmm. that would love to manipulate his message. And you and you have a big ego because everybody looks at you right. and, and, and you know talk, tells you how awesome you are and you have this huge platform and. I mean, I understand it, but here's the here's the thing. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna stand for something, first off, I support the fuck out of people who walk the walk. If you if you stand for something and your actions reflect it, man. Yeah. Even if I disagree with you, I respect that. Like I respect the fact that you're not full of shit. I don't have a problem with him speaking out. That's his right, and and he seemed like he was super against injustice. But this now just shows. That he's not. Well, it's just inconsistent. You, no integrity. Yeah. No integrity. You're 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 afraid. Like if you're gonna be a, a big mouth about stuff, that's fine. I know I'm a big mouth, right? Mm. But you got to be able to stand behind what you're doing, even if that means that they're that now your money. Well, you know, somebody. Asked, I got a bunch of questions. People were asking because China me. has a lot of power. With so this. Steve Kerr was asked in questions about all this, and he just. Psh- didn't want to say anything about it. He got a ton of people were pissed at him. And I got a lot of people DMing me asking me my opinion. So here's my opinion on that. Steve Kerr is not a fucking politician. (laughs) Steve Kerr probably has the same views as I have, which is I don't know enough about this that I'm going to make a hard stance and comment on it because I don't know. I've got to do my research. And I and I respect somebody who does that. Right. I don't know why we feel that we need to hear everybody's opinion on things if they're not educated in it. Mm-hmm. If I'm not educated on an opinion, I'm either one going to preface it with that. Yeah. I don't know a lot about this, but what I do know, I've heard this or heard that. Based off that, maybe this. Like That's how well, I'm going to talk. I'm not going to say come out like a LeBron James yeah. and make hard stances in areas that like I, a just, knee-jerk response I just don't know enough things, about. Yeah. yeah, and so Steve Kerr opted out of commenting on something like that, which I don't, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I think that sometimes, sometimes the best thing said is nothing at all. Totally, you yes. know, totally, a hundred percent. But lost I, art. I will say this: this is playing right into uh, this coming election because what's happening is a lot of people are having really negative views on China. I know you said you actually said something that I didn't even think about that I think is yeah, a, it does make sense. A pretty smart. Uh, you know, speculation. Yeah, the more they blow this up, the more American fans are like, screw you, China, for right. you know, for, for doing this stuff or whatever. And which only plays into Trump's hands with his whole tariff war. Yeah, any rift is gonna help his cause. For the sure. more Americans have a negative view on China, the better for President Trump. I think it's all garbage, but <laughs> I'm just saying politically speaking, the better it works for for him. And this is just one of those things. The fact that they're threatening to you know, to ban the NBA and the because of you know people's words. Like again, Americans don't. There's a lot of things we disagree on, but one thing that we're uh, across the board, whether you're left or right, for the most part, is freedom of speech. Don't tell us what we can and can't say. Right. And, you know, so this will be really interesting. First question is from Papa Bear 1414. What is your best advice for someone who wants to lose 50 plus pounds? Where to start? How to stay motivated? And how to transition from unhealthy to healthy habits? Good question and um one that i think a lot of people fuck up Mm -hmm. when i look back at all the people that i've trained and uh, specifically ones that had 50 to 100 or more pounds that they needed to lose the, the if i could say that the number one mistake that they all made is for years obviously like whoever this person is they i think we can all agree that you didn't wake up one day and put 50 pounds on, right? That took uh, probably years of of bad behaviors or bad choices when it came to food and exercise and things like that. And and, and now you're here, but now you recognize it and, and you want to make a change. But what ends up happening is we go from hardly any movement or, you know, pretty sedentary lifestyle, not exercising, probably not making the best food choices to I'm going to change my life. And I'm, and so every, I mean, you fucking throw out everything in the, in the kitchen and you start all over, you buy a personal trainer who's going to train you three days a week. And then the other three days you're coming in on your own or you're running or you're, and you, and then you start eating salads, you know, three times a day. Uh, you're taking all the fat loss supplement. I mean, you just throw the whole mm-hmm. kitchen sink out of it, at it. And that is such a bad way to attack a goal this size and you are far better off picking one or two things in your life that you know weren't serving you towards this goal, i.e., 
I drink fucking six sodas a day or I I eat out at Taco Bell every single night. Like there's probably a lot of things in somebody who's put 50 to 100 pounds on that they were doing that they know is probably not ideal behaviors. And instead of trying to cut them all cold turkey and go balls to the wall with exercise, you are better off starting off with one or two small goals and, and, and fucking hammering those and hitting them home. And then it, they become they become new habits mm-hmm. and new behaviors. And then you slowly add to that. It, it sounds like it's going to take you longer to get to the 50 pounds that way, but it's that's not true. You'll actually get to the 50 pounds faster by doing this slow and right than you would be if you come out the gates and you lose 20 pounds fast. Because the 20 pounds typically does come off pretty fast for somebody that's got to lose 50 to 100. But then the hard plateau comes after that and you're not even halfway to your goal and you're already doing the gym six days a week. You're already eating three salads. You're already doing the protein shakes. You're already taking the fat burners. You're already fucking biggest loser training where you're sweating your dick off every day in the gym and you don't know where to go from there and the only place that you normally do is go back to where you were and what ends up happening is you go back and you go back worse that's what i would say is the number one mistake yeah i I, look at your realize this that your body is a reflection of your total lifestyle so it's everything that you do everything that you eat just basically how you live your body is a reflection of that. And now you want to radically change the way your body looks. So you're going to have to change your lifestyle, but it goes a little further. You're going to have to change that lifestyle and it's going to have to stay that way forever, forever until your last day on earth. Otherwise, it'll go back. You'll go back to the way you were before. So this isn't a destination that you get to and you get this accomplishment. And then after you get to that accomplishment, you think, okay, I'm here now. Cool. Now I can stop all this crap that I've been doing and I can go back to what I was doing before and the weight will stay off. It doesn't work that way. And I think that's obvious. I think a lot of people kind of understand that. But you have to really understand it. Now, once you really understand it, realize and appreciate. Here's a big one. Really appreciate the how hard it is to, to fundamentally change your lifestyle. It's not easy. You're changing your life. It's probably one of the hardest things you'll ever do. Now, anytime you make a big change in a challenging change in your life, the best way to do it is slowly, just like what Adam was saying. You're not you, you you're not going to change it overnight, and if you do, it's not going to stay that way permanently. The statistics show it. Um, it's uh, 100%. It doesn't work for most people long-term. The only way to achieve long-term success is a very slow and steady approach. So what does that mean, slow and steady? Does that mean I tackle everything a little bit? Maybe, uh, here's a better approach, tackle one small thing at a time. So maybe what you do right now is uh, you, if you're not eating vegetables, say, okay, I'm going to start eating vegetables every day and just do that. Once that becomes natural, once that becomes a part of your life where you think to yourself like, this is just the way I eat now and it's totally, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, this is permanent, then add the next thing and then do that until it feels like it's permanent and then add the next thing And, and be kind to yourself. If you're not exercising at all and you never have exercised or it's been a long time, going from that to three or four days a week in the gym, you're not being very kind to yourself. You're not really being empathetic to how challenging it is. Why not go from zero to one? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to the gym on Mondays. That's it. Monday, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to spend 45 minutes in the gym doing a few things. And I'm going to do that for a while until it's automatic, until it becomes something that I'm always going to do. And then I'm going to add another day. In fact, you won't even have to tell yourself that. It'll happen naturally. I, I, when I learned this as a personal trainer, training clients, I remember how much it blew me away. I, I, I really had this epiphany probably seven years into my career. And then I would train, you know, when people would come to me and say, how many days a week do I need to work out? And I said, well, what's realistic for you forever? And, and once we, we kind of get down to the, the bottom line, it was like, you know, one or two days a week. I'd say, no problem. Let's start with that. There's a lot we can do with one or two days a week in the gym in comparison to zero. In comparison to what you're doing now, there's a lot. There's a lot of room that I have to play with with one or two days a week. And then we would start like that. And what would end up happening is they'd come and see me one day a week or two days a week. Little by little, they'd start really enjoying it. They'd start feeling the, the results. It feels good. becomes a part of their life. Before I'd know it, they would come to me. 
they would come to me and be like, hey, Sal, I want to I wanna do an extra day. What do, you, what do you think I should do? And I'd be like, well, what sounds good to you? Yeah. Do you want to do more resistance training? Do you want to do yoga classes? And then they'd pick an extra day. Or their diet. They would start with one thing. And then they'd come to me and be like, you know what? I, I'm, I think I'm going to start reducing my sugar intake. I'm like, that sounds good. And over the course of you know, 50 pounds, if you do it slowly, it might take you one or two years to do it the right way, but it ain't going to come back. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, I, I look at it as like, do you want to constantly be at war with yourself? And what I mean by that is if I'm going to take this approach, like I'm going to do everything at once and I'm going to get to this this place where I feel like I've lost the 50 pounds and you know I did this massive accomplishment, but I didn't do the, what you guys are describing in terms of like taking your time through it. So you actually, uh, you know, learn, learn it at a level that it's almost unconscious. Like I, I, this is who I am now. This is who I'm becoming. Um, you're just going to keep battling this. This is just going to be a constant thing that you have to like consciously think about. I have to get to the gym. I have to eat better. I have to do this. Like it's, you're always hammering yourself about, uh, whether or not you're doing good or you're not doing good. And this is always going to be a battle for you versus taking that time to really, you know, use this as an opportunity to now I'm just going to focus on this, this thing. I know I can, can, can change on a level where it's, it's just not going to affect me anymore. Like it used to. Yeah. Here's, here's the, uh, here's an, a good, a good way of saying this. Uh, oftentimes I'd get a client that would come to me and say they want to lose a lot of weight and we would talk about it and I'd always ask why and you know how do you think that's going to make you feel and what's the reason why you want to accomplish this and oftentimes I hear people say well it's going to make me happy. Here's the irony of this. You don't lose weight and then become happy. You actually become happy and then you lose the weight. It's it's the other way around. It's the same thing as is chasing money and rich, you know. You're mm-hmm. not going to people they have goals of making a certain dollar amount and if you, once you get there you think you're going to be happy and what everybody who's ever achieved that goal will tell you is it's not how it works. Mm-hmm. So fat loss is the same thing too. You think that when I lose this 50 pounds or when I become a millionaire, I'm going to be this happy person. It's like, no, you choose to be happy yeah. now. And then that also teaches you to reframe how you look at the journey to the million dollars or the journey to the 50 pounds is you got to learn to love the process. And the only way you're going to learn to love the process is if you slowly start to do one behavior to be until you get to the point like Sal was saying where, hey, I start off with one day of exercise and and that one day of exercise is challenging and it's hard. But then after a while, it's like I start to like it and I look forward to it and I enjoy it. I look forward to it and I enjoy it so much. I go, man, I want to do another day a week. Mm-hmm. And then you add two days and then you keep doing that. And you do the same thing with like eating. You make a couple good choices as far as uh, good eating habits and you start to connect the dots of, oh, wow, my stool is better. Oh, wow, my sleep is better. Oh, wow, my energy is better. Oh, wow, my digestion feels better. Like, wow, I, I kind of like eating healthy. This is kind of cool. Maybe instead of only doing it a couple times a week, I'm going to do it every day of the week. Or maybe I'm going to try and eat even healthier because I'm starting to notice like, I feel better. I like these things. Like that's the goal is to really start to fall in love with the process of getting there. And it's hard to do that to Justin's point when you're at war with yourself all the time. When you went from being one way completely and the whole other way, it's like this crazy uphill battle and you're beating yourself up and you're restricting from so many things. Life sucks. Yeah. Life sucks when you're doing that. And who wants to stay in it? Nobody's going to want to stay in that situation. Here's some tangible. This is why Biggest Loser, 85% of them fucking fail. Well, I mean, that's anybody who loses a lot of weight. You know, a a majority, a vast majority of them gain the weight back. Here's some tangibles with diet. Rather than taking things away, start by adding things. This is a good strategy. So rather than looking at your diet and say, I'm going to cut all these things out, think what are some healthy foods that can add to my diet and then start adding those into your diet. It's a little easier to do that than it is to, to reduce. As far as exercise is concerned, start with resistance training. Go to the gym, even if it's once a week, and practice, okay, practice key lifts. Don't go to the gym to beat yourself up, but rather go in there, pick four or five exercises that you're going to practice and get good at. And resistance training, the reason why I say start with the resistance training is because that's going to set your body up for the long-term weight loss because the muscle burns more calories, you get a faster metabolism, you'll get stronger, increase your mobility. It's not as grueling. It doesn't feel like you're killing yourself like you are when you're trying to do cardio all the time. Just go to the gym, do a little bit of weights, start by adding healthy foods to your diet. Um, that's That would be where I would say we should start. Next question is from Thunderbolt. 
I've heard the older you get, you begin to lose muscle mass. Is this true? If it's true, can it be reversed with weight training? Is it harder to make gains the older you get? Yes, the older you get, you do lose uh, muscle mass. I hate that, though. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's based off of a study that's uh, where we take everybody, all walks of life, and we, we average it out. And we average it out. And since we know that 80% of the population don't strength train, mm -hmm. uh, then, yeah, of course, you know, over the course of 30 years of we tracked people aging that you lose muscle mass and that's what it looks like. Yeah, if you maintain, you're such an outlier. Right. So th that's that's where this this idea comes from. That's it, well, where well, aging regardless, you will lose some muscle mass. But here's the difference. That's not true. Oh. Somebody who's never worked out before, who is 30 years old, I put them on a weight training program from 30 to 40, what will happen? From Hold on a second. I'm talking about, let's say you're consistent working out the whole time. So I'm always... So, I've been through. That, that's the problem. That's not everybody else. But I'll still lose muscle. So like a you know, 60-year-old me and that's is not, not going to have as much muscle. And even that's not necessarily true. If you are trained- So you're saying that your, your body so, doesn't age? So no, I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying that it doesn't get more difficult as you get older. I'm just saying that the studies are flawed that you're that we're using to have this well, discussion. This, For example, okay, to your point, which you're where you're going right now. Is if I train consistently the same way from you know 17 years old to 60 years old, do you? Yeah, of course you do. That's what it, but what if you train at 17 years old to 30 years old three times a week, and then from 30 to 40 you scale to four to five days a week? Would you lose muscle? You, you well, no, no, you wouldn't. You, maybe you know you wouldn't. You, 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 maybe so. Here, so here's my point. What I was going to make with this: age does affect the body. It does cause muscle loss and loss of mobility. But the difference between somebody who's active appropriately and the difference between someone who's sedentary is massive. It's huge. If you take a 70-year-old who's been lifting weights their whole, whole life and you compare them to an average 70-year-old who doesn't do anything, the difference between them is like it's like two different species. You have somebody who's got muscle strength, full mobility and independence, and then you have someone with chronic illness, loss of mobility, and loss of independence. So yes, age does affect how much muscle you can you you can have on your body, but boy, can you offset the shit out of that? Yeah, but I don't with even proper like, I don't even like saying that. Mm -hmm. I don't even like telling people that that it has something to do with it because it can be totally the opposite. It's 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 a it's a general truth that we've used because we've lumped everybody in one study. We give way too much power to it. Yes, what that's saying. what I'm saying. That's yes. why I don't even like to. Yeah. I don't even like to fucking. You don't want to highlight. It yes, it's, it's I don't like I, when the clients yeah, used yeah. to say that. Be like, no, no, yeah, that's not yeah, true. Yeah. You're hiring me today, Susie. No, I get your point. At 60 years old, you've never worked out in your life. I'm going to give you more muscle than you've ever had in your life. Sure. For sure. sure. Yeah, a uh, 50-year-old who lifts weights and does it appropriately is going to have more muscle and strength than a 30-year-old who does nothing. Exactly. Yeah, that's, and that's but, why I don't like to use right. that those studies. But age, and, age does play, objectively speaking... Right, makes age, it more, makes more difficult yeah, for it, multiple reasons, yeah, right? Yeah. For multiple reasons. Right, it's your not, hormones get affected, all kinds of factors. Right. You do, but even even this, look, even if, you're, uh, even if you lift weights and you stay active, your hormones don't get, don't get affected nearly as much. Oh, yeah. yeah especially yeah. if you're, you're a man. You're to stabilize them a lot better. Yeah, especially for men. A man's testosterone level stay pretty stable yeah. uh, for most of their life as long as they're exercising and active. So aging does have an effect, but but working out, especially resistance training, has a direct opposing effect to the effects of aging. Right. And what what to your point, Adam, what we see with aging is this: you're a kid, you're you know you're in your teens, you're playing outside, you're playing sports. Now in your twenties, maybe you're more active. You're still active in your twenties. Then you hit your thirties, got kids not really being active anymore, 40s, all you do is work, 50s, definitely all you do is work, 60s, you retire, now you don't even work anymore. <laughs> a lot of the decline in the health and muscle mass that we see, a lot of it is lifestyle. Is lifestyle. Yes. Some of it is due to age, but not nearly as much right. as, 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 as much as we think there is. And to your point that yeah. the somebody, that person who goes down that trajectory of that's what the average quote unquote person does, exactly, I think that's a great point you're making. That same person, uh, and if we were to look at his muscle mass at 60 years old, if you were to compare that same guy who decided to weight train his whole life, boy, would the the the, the difference if you were to measure their body uh, hormonally, muscle mass wise, it would be astronomically. Oh, different. it's it's in, it's insane. Look, I just turned 40 this year. Um, if when I look at my peers who are 40, and 40 is not that old, especially nowadays, people live to their 
80s and 90s. So I'm, I'm like halfway there. So I'm not that old, right? But I look at my peers who don't exercise, who don't lift weights. Yeah. And it's like, are we even the same? Are we even the same, you know, species? It doesn't look like it at well, all. It's like the snowball going down the hill. It you gets, know, if, you, if you get off track, it's really going to compile fast as you age. It totally. I mean, now if you're 15 years old or 20 years old, there's a difference. It ain't massive. But as you get older, boy, does that difference make a huge difference. So in reality, here's the way I look at it. And this is why I do not uh, fear aging at all. In fact, I look forward to aging. Is as I get older, I separate myself more and more from my peers. You know, when I was lifting weights and I was 20, there was a difference between me and my peers, but there's a lot of 20 year old dudes out there that don't work out that are still pretty strong and pretty mobile and whatnot. Not as many in their 40s. No. Not, not, as, not as many 40 year old dudes that don't do anything that also have good mobility and good strength. And it's amazing. Like, so I even think, like, so yesterday I was lifting and I was, uh, it was a heavy lift day for me. I've been in a, like, a phase one of anabolic type of training and I haven't been training like this for a while. And, you know, I, I'm doing weights and I'm, I'm like, you know what? Considering that I've gone through all this stuff hormonally, I'm approaching 40 years old. Like I'm looking at the weights that I'm lifting and I'm moving. And I, I would think that my volume, my frequency, everything's extremely low compared to just where I was five years ago. But when I compare myself to 20 and 22. Kicking ass. Yeah. I, I would fuck 22-year-old me up. And 22-year-old me was training seven days a week. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that really puts into perspective, like, when you continue to train years over years over years, how compounding that is. Even me right now, which I would consider myself very deconditioned in comparison to the best version of me, even me deconditioned right now is way better than me training seven days a week and, and on it at 22 years old. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, man, you, 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 if you're tra weight training and staying consistent with it, yes, age does make it more difficult. But I mean, to me, there's also, if someone's could stay consistent with lifting, there's benefits to age, you know, the, 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 the old man strength and the CNS right. training and the patterns that I've built for so many your body. Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, yeah. it doesn't take me very long to get under that bar for a few weeks or a month and I'm already moving weights that it took me 10 years to get up to as a young kid. Yeah, and here's the here's the big reason why I don't like the age conversation. Objectively speaking, yes, our bodies all age. Yes, it has an impact on us. And as we get older, it becomes a larger and larger impact. But, but we just discussed how big of a difference activity and diet play in offsetting that. But here's the real reason why I hate that. Because it's inevitable. Why are we going to focus on something that we can't control? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, it's you can't control it. So why place all your focus on it? Why say, oh, it's because I'm older. Oh, my, I'm getting older. It sucks or whatever. Y here's the deal. Make peace with reality. Here's the reality. Every second you're getting older. That's reality. <laughs> yeah. You might as well make peace with it because you can't change it. I, and, and they have yet to invent something that stops the aging process or reverses mm -hmm. it. So until that day comes, yeah. just make friends with it. Get I'm, used to rituals. Yeah, I'm getting older. Okay, yeah. so what? Uh, you know, I still I'm active. I work out. I have a good time. I eat right. Um, and again, as you get older, you will separate yourself from from your peers to the point where it will become. I've had clients. I've trained a lot of clients in their 60s and 70s, and I've trained some that were super consistent with working out who had been for 30 or 40 years. And man, let me tell you, it's not even it's not even fair. It's crazy. I had a client who was 70, the last time I trained him, I think he was 72 years old, and he'd been working out consistently for over 30 or 40 years. Here's a 72-year-old man who could swim for two hours straight, he nonstop. I would do ab workouts with him. Okay. He actually would come in and would be my workout partner. And this fucker not only would keep up with me, but some days he would kick my ass. He was obviously independent as shit. He didn't need nobody. He's got great muscle on his body. He got his testosterone levels checked. He was at 600, you know, for a 72-year-old man. And, and and then I compare him to like the average 70-year-old 70, 70 that I know, you know, like family members or people that I know that are 70. And it's, I look at them and I'm like, they're on 15 different medications. Mm -hmm. They can't get out of a couch without somebody helping them. They can't. Some of them need assistance already. Um, they can't walk you know, for more than, you know, a quarter mile without having to stop. And it's like, wow, what a, comp that you have, they need Viagra. Yeah. You've put yourself in a cage. You know what I mean? That cage is, is, is age. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going to, it's going to happen to me no matter what, for sure. But age is a cage, but boy, does it make a big difference when you're, when Boom. you're, when you do the right stuff. 
Next question is from Dance Girl. When is it appropriate to sit or stand for an exercise? For example, seated dumbbell curls versus standing dumbbell curls. What difference does sitting versus standing make? Do you guys have a major dog in this fight? I just, I prefer standing. That's just my preference. Yeah, you're a dork, though. But yeah. <laughs> you're an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> you're an athlete. Just fuck you, you bodybuilder. I know. I sit a yeah. lot because of that. I'm yeah. saying, yeah. like, uh, yeah. we're really splitting hairs, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I can make a case, though, for this why. This is the division here between us. Yeah. So. Well, I, I, yeah. I could definitely make a case for why standing is better. Uh, if if you were to ask, if I had to defend one, that one being better than the other, I, I think it's obvious. I think we would all agree standing is better. Yeah, just overall functional ability. Yeah, yeah. it's just you're going to burn more calories. You're well, standing. Just you have to incorporate because so. a, a, a seated dumbbell curl or a seated shoulder press, um, you completely take your lower half out of the equation. So mm -hmm. you, you're, you're having to stabilize with your trunk and core a little bit and then mm -hmm. everything up. Uh, if you're standing, you have to do all that, plus your legs and feet have to stabilize. So there's going to be a higher caloric expenditure. There's going to be more stabilization involved. So for those reasons, I can make the case that it's technically better. But we're talking about splitting hairs here. Yeah. And and honestly, uh, at the bodybuilder in me, um, when I'm trying to build, I don't actually – I don't address – when I lift – uh, and in the when I'm building and sculpting a physique, I'm actually not worried. I actually don't want to burn a bunch of extra calories. Right. I'm there to just focus on my shoulders. I don't want to make the you exercise maximize the squeeze of that particular right. muscle. I don't want to make the yeah. exercise more challenging right. than what it already is. So if I'm doing bicep curls and shoulder press, I'm seated because I want to focus on that muscle. But for overall function and health and yeah, and, and also to population, kinda, yeah, argue in your direction uh, in terms of like teaching too. I'll, I'll take a, a, a seated curl over standing just because there's less uh, stimulus. There's less, uh, you know, things that I have to to cue in terms of, uh, you know, having them to just focus in on like what the, the function is, you know, supposed to provide in terms of like where their elbow position needs to be, like how they need to hold their, their body in position. Like there's just a lot less factors. Uh, you know, to work on besides, you know, standing up because yes, you do have to be able to really control your body and, and stabilize everything, you know, with, with more intensity. Yeah. See, seated is good for uh, if you want to do a really controlled movement and you really want to feel the target muscles, then seated can be cool. That's why bodybuilders like seated so much. Remember, bodybuilders are always looking to target uh, you know, a specific muscle and feel it more in that particular muscle. And there's some benefit to that. Um, there's some benefit to for muscle growth uh, for that, but not because it's necessarily better at muscle growth, but sometimes connecting to a muscle a little bit better can make that happen. It, it negates body movement a lot. So if I'm seated and I'm doing a curl or overhead tricep extension or a shoulder press, I'm less likely to use momentum and the rest of my body to move a weight. Um, for functional purposes, though, standing's the best. No, uh, yeah. If you're if you're a person, if I mean, to me, that's the, the the divide here. Who should do what? If you are the the functional guy or girl, mm -hmm. and like that's what you're all about. You love mobility. You're all about the the total body working together, and like in general health and fitness. Like I'm pushing you standing everything. Mm -hmm. But if you're the guy who's just like I'm trying, I really want to build my delts. I really want to build my bicep. I care about sculpting my physique. Then fucking sit down. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's it's and at the end of the day, both people can do both and be completely fine and still be functional and still build incredible yep. physiques. There's not right. it's that that's that small of a deal. It's not worth really debating. Now argument. here's where it gets a little complicated, right? Because then I have people. These are the hyper functional trainer trainers. These are the trainers that are like everything needs to be oh, super God. functional. Stand on a ball or a Bosu <laughs> yeah. ball. Or well, something. well, even before that, they'll say, okay, a bench press is not functional because you're lying down. You should do a standing chest press, a cable chest press where you're bracing yeah, let's yourself. Do a much more, uh, less effective exercise well, version of it. And, and, and now why is it less effective? It's less effective because if I'm doing a standing chest press with cables. That's uh, What's his face? What's that guy that we that we get annoyed by every once in a while? Functional patterns. Yeah. yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. because he's, I'm standing, I'm yeah. limited by how much weight I can use. I can't push as, or I can't row as much. If I'm doing like a cable row and I'm standing, I'm not going to be able to row as much as if I'm doing a seated cable row. So now I'm not able to exert as much force and build as much strength and muscle. So there are some benefits, you know, that kind of go both ways. Like, is it more functional to do a chest press standing versus a bench press on a bench? Not necessarily. If I get stronger on a bench press, that overall strength gain is going to overpower the fact that you're doing a chest press and you're standing. I'm going to build more muscle 
and more strength. So it's not as simple as one is necessarily always more functional, one is you know necessarily better for isolation or whatever. Um, I would say this, uh, for most people listening right now, mix them all up. Yeah. Mix them all up, see how they feel, enjoy. I, I many times will do a standing circus press or dumbbell press or standing push press with the barbells, and then lots of times I'll sit down on a 90 bench and do shoulder presses there. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm very inconsistent with doing the same thing all the time. I think there's yeah. value to being able to push something over your head in a seated position to push something over your head in a standing mm-hmm. position. Mm-hmm. And I think it it's really splitting hairs on trying to make the argument that one is better than the yeah, other. I just tended to go with the one that's harder. <laughs> you always pick the hard one. Oh, yeah. Next question is from John Alva 7 I recently went full-time with my training business, and I'm trying to organize the payment side of the business. How do you recommend going about payments so you can scale the business better? So, I, so I'm, I'm going to start this because um, when I first met— um, You can tell him cash so you don't have to claim everything? Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> don't throw that out. I know. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah. I paid everything. Yeah. No, here's—okay, so this is something that um, I'd heard other trainers doing, but I didn't ever really met someone that was doing it effectively until I met Justin. So I, I up until the last day I trained people, followed the old-school model of tra- clients buying packages. So mm-hmm. I'd have a single session rate, which let's just say your single rate session rate's $100. And then if you buy ten sessions or more, it's ninety five dollars a session. If you buy twenty or more, it's it's you know ninety, and so on. So people get a discount for buying a package, and then as they show up, they use the you know the the, the session out of the package. They'd sign off on it and they'd leave, and then they would just use it up, and they'd have to use it up over a certain period of time, maybe a year or something like that. And it's just an easy way to manage it. It's the way that most gyms do it. It's the way most trainers tend to do it. Um, but the way that Justin, the way that you did it, was interesting to me, and I see it being far superior from a business standpoint. Um, so maybe you can explain, because I'm not going to do it justice, justice. Yeah, well, I just, I I kind of went to a lot of these different fitness business summits and like th- this was something that uh, as an independent trainer, you really have to figure this out and like treat it as a business and, and get beyond the fact that you're going to have all these contracts kind of keep coming on, you know, piling up on your lap. Like you have to really, you know, be involved in the advertisement process and, and, you know, all the different appointments. And then also you have to have consistent income just to keep things going. So uh, I had to get more reliable income sources. And so for the way that I I understood it from a lot of other um, people that I was learning from in, in terms of how to tackle this, they were starting to use, uh, you know, ways to kind of capture, um, you know, month to month automated type of payments. Um, and so they would start to lower their, you know, lower their cost per month. Um, and so this, this would be like an automated payment system to where they could have like consistency that now they could structure, you know, that month, here's, here's what's coming in and here's, you know, my expenses. And then, you know, this could start being more reliable. Uh, and I started to kind of use that model, but then, um, what I found to be, uh, more effective in my business was it's more personal to where, um, I, I would charge a flat rate. So I'd charge a flat rate. Uh, per month, and I give them two options. I gave them like a full time option, and I gave them a you know part time option. And so that looked anything from like three to four plus you know times you're going to meet with me per week, um, where we schedule it in you know ahead of time, all that stuff. So I get the commitment, or you know less than that is like part time basically. And you know it's up to you whether or not you make the appointment. I'm going to put it in the schedule. You know for a fact I'm going to be there. Like I I'm, I'm going to be as professional as I can. I'm going to make the experience like as good as I can. If you have things come up, you know I understand. But this is kind of where you know I'm kind of throwing that ball back on the client. This is the this is like you know where we can kind of agree before we get started that uh, you know this is this is how I run my business and you know you. You understand that going into this, like that's the parameter. So, so, so there's no question. So part time would be less than three days a week. Yes. So they can go up to two days a week of training with you. Mm-hmm. Full time is three or four days a week. Yeah. Or up to four days a week. Right. And then they'd pay a flat rate either way. So let's just say I'm going to make up some numbers. Two thousand dollars is part time. Two thousand dollars a month. You're going to see me up to two days a week. 
four, you know, three thousand five hundred dollars a month. Uh, you know, give them a d- discount or something. You're going to see me up to four days a week, right? Something like that. And then it's it's automatic. And every you month. can structure it however you want. You can do the price. You, you play with the price points uh, based off of like how much volume we want. And for me, I was like a way less volume guy. I was all about like higher service, less volume. And so I structured my my entire payment process uh, accordingly, and then uh, geared and directed all my focus and my marketing to speak to that person and what they wanted. And so I actually extended it even to like five to six times a week, just because, you know, people are at a higher price point. They really wanted access to me and, and they wanted, you know, to, to know that I could, uh, I could come back again and, and do stretching and do like all these extra Maybe things, nutrition. Well, which right. is, which is worth it when you're hitting a price point of four to $5,000 or even $3,000. Cause then you only need three people exactly and, and you're a, and you're a six-figure business already that, so that's exactly how i structure because one of the big challenges with doing the old way which is how i did it and, and this was something i used to have to coach trainers on is they it would it was hard for them to figure out what their monthly income would be because you'd have let's say four or five resigns this month and then now they've all bought 40 sessions mm-hmm. they're not going to resign with you for another two to four months depending on how much they show up so you have this big month, you may, you know maybe bring in $12,000, then next month you bring in $2,000, yeah. and then the next month you bring in $5,000. And, 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 and they, you have to figure out how to, how to track all that because what would end up happening with a lot of trainers, they'd have a big month, they'd spend a bunch of money, then the next month come around, they're like, I don't, I'm not making yeah. any money. And be like, not well, you not have to, to mention you have to service all those appointments. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. that old model of having to sign off on every uh, session to me is, is dinosaur because, now, yeah, because now, like, yeah, you, you, you just close the contract, but you still have to get through all of them to then re sign them versus, you know, month to month. I know, like, I give them th- th- this parameter, but, you know, next month I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, close and I know exactly how much money I have. Now, did you find that when you switched to doing it month to month, like you're saying, that the clients were more consistent? Yes. Oh, they were. Yep. Because they knew they're paying no matter what. They knew. And and they knew that like it I was either gonna fill that, you know, space or, or, or time and they wanted to solidify, you know, that that, you know, specific hour with me. It's like it's almost like they're buying that time, you know, you know, at that price point. So Yeah, so far when I the, some of the most successful trainers I've met since then have done it your way. Uh, I think the old way, you have to learn how to manage your income better. You have to really be good about getting clients to want to come work out because someone could buy 30 sessions. This is not unheard of. This happens to a lot of trainers. Mm-hmm. Client will show up for 15 or 20 sessions and then kind of slowly you know, come in every once in a while because they're scheduled or whatever. Next thing you know, it's like eight months later and that client's still on the same original package. Mm-hmm. You don't know how much is coming in. So I think that's the smart way to now, do it. Now, we know Jonathan, and I'm, I'm going towards going to his – Instagram, if I can find him real quick, because what I'm interested in, Jonathan, is if you have like a website. Because here's the thing that's that's important. Yeah, I don't think he does. In fact, he, his link. Yeah, I don't. See, I see an email, but I don't see an actual website. At least mm. he's not advertising it. I, I think, and and maybe his payment question too has something to do with like literally uh, what uh, uh, like what, a. Yeah, like PayPal, like Square, yeah, Square or, or one of those PayPal. Options. Oh, that's or, so easy nowadays. Yeah, it's so it was Square and and, pay, and all that stuff. It's yeah, so but I, I mean, to me, one of the things that you need to you have you need to get done, and you're you're probably going to spend a, a pretty penny doing this. Uh, you know, I think my my first like real website that I I built, I think was I think cost me almost twelve grand uh, to build the first one, but you, you need to have a, a fully automated website. You need to have a place that you can direct people to, uh, where this is built into it. So it has a PayPal option. It has a place that can take the credit cards. It has, um, I wish mine was still up so I could, I think I stopped paying the domain name and so you can't access anymore. Uh, but you also should have, so I created a, a a place that generates leads and it was basically a, a really detailed, um, uh, like park you that just asked them their goal, how many times they want to train all these, all these things at, that I could drive to them. And then I could get this information. So I would know their full name, their age, their goal, how consistent they want to train, how, how long they've been training for like I, n- nutrition, where, what level they are there. Just to, there's a ton of questions that they had to fill out to, for me. And then I get, then it, it, it was designed to where if they hit that in my website, it automatically got emailed to me. So every morning I'd wake up, and you know, hopefully, have anywhere between on average, I, I'd have like one to three leads in there. 
of people that dropped into my website and were interested in like a free consultation. And that's how I would present it is like, you know, a free chance to, to meet with me and we could discuss whatever uh, as far as uh, a program or their goals. And then I would call them up. They'd have their phone number on there and everything, call them up. And then I'd say, hey, this is Adam, blah, blah, blah. And then I would talk to them uh, about setting up a consultation. Um, you got to have that now, in my opinion. I mean, we live in a, a digital time. Like The whole point of you building a social media following is to be a top of the funnel or a lead generator. You need somewhere to direct those people. Uh, you most certainly don't want to be like, oh, slide in my DM and then we'll talk and then we then I'll meet with you and you're scheduling it all that way. You need to automate this process if you're really trying to scale a business because in a perfect world, you get to a point where you're you're generating several leads every single day. And if you're trying to manage that through email or through uh, DMs on your Instagram, you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, bombarded. And you're never gonna be able to scale out of that. So at one point, you need to bite the bullet, invest in building a website that's robust enough that has a place for them to purchase right away there. So if they know they want an option, like Justin mm -hmm. is saying, full time this many times a week, I can just buy right there. Which you know, a very small percentage of people will do that, but you want to have it there for the the people that do, because I'm sure this has even happened to Justin where. You know, occasionally you get that that client who is just an easy laydown. They were mm -hmm. already looking to buy personal training. Your bio sold them, or they got a they were you were a referral from somebody else. They look at your website, and that's all they needed to get confirmed that this is the guy I want to mm -hmm. work with. And so they just purchase right then and there. Or you have an option of you know a pop up that comes up and says, you know, oh, if you want a free consultation with me, you know, b fill out this form and I'll email you and book you or whatever. Uh, you need to have that. So I you, I would invest in getting a website built up so you have that, and then that becomes your place that you drive your people to to generate your leads. So to me, that is, if, from what I see, just glancing at your Instagram right now, uh, unless you're not advertising your own website on there, that's something you got to do for sure. Excellent advice. Mm -hmm. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. So we have guides on everything from fat loss to muscle building, to helping you with your exercise execution. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.